Veli Bai is a Raika from Sadri village in Rajasthan in India. The Raika are ethno veterinary experts and skilled animal breeders whose services are vital to the camel's survival and well being. The camels, for their part, provide transport, draft power, dairy products, and much else to their human partners. For months on end, the Raikas with their animals roam on their own, following the clouds to find water and vegetation in this arid region. जंगल में सारे ने घास फूस वे तो जोड़े खाई ने पासा घर आता तो रैका लोग पेड़ नहीं काटे कोई पत्ती पड़े नीसी वा गिरे तो वा पशु पालन खाते वो कोई डाला फारे ने नहीं खाती है वो तो सिर्फ मनक काटे काटे ने जंगल खत्म करता है पशु पालन नहीं करते A few hundred kilometers south of the Thar, the Maldharis stand cattle, buffaloes, camels, sheep and goats in the grasslands of Kutch. Their breeding skills have made the bunny buffalo the backbone of the milk supply system in India's business capital, Mumbai. The foraging habits of the Maldhari's animals are essential to the life cycle of many tree species in Kutch and play a vital role in conserving its biodiversity. Across the world, there are innumerable such examples of communities tending animals and living within a landscape that supports and is supported by them. An ecosystem is an intricate web of such mutually sustaining relationships between human communities, animal and plant species, and the broader terrain and climate. Indigenous peoples and local communities are custodians of some of Earth's most precious ecosystems. Where they live for many generations in a particular territory or area, their intimate awareness of these relationships becomes a complex living science, shaped by time and experience to promote the continuance of the system in its totality. It also leads to the emergence of diverse cultures, languages, knowledge systems and beliefs. Deep-rooted relationships with their environment and territories enable many indigenous peoples and communities to sustain current generations without compromising the needs of those in the future. Their roles as ecosystem stewards are only just beginning to be understood and recognized by conservationists and policy makers. Important rights and responsibilities are being enshrined in international and domestic laws. But understanding and realizing these rights and responsibilities in practice can be a challenge. Today's situation is very bad. Before, the place was very good. There was no place to go. 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 The jungle was closed by itself. So, we kept our people in the same place. So, we kept our people in the same place. We kept our land in the same place. We kept our land in the same place. कोई रही का जात हम रही का जाती रह पास कोई जमीन जगा नहीं है ने मरत जीवन ही अन जंगल माते इस ता तो आज की तारीख में जंगल सब बंद कर दिया तो हमारा जीवन ही खत्म है बस Many communities have their own approaches to governance and development planning 
that may differ from the government or private sector's approach. When they engage with outsiders, such as government officials or researchers, it may be difficult to communicate across different languages, values and property systems. We need a diversity of ways of resolving conflicts and some indigenous traditional ways of resolving conflicts were ways of getting open discussion but respectful. Uh, there are mechanisms to enable you to move toward reasonable outcomes. But uh, in a lot of places we've taken the rights uh, away from people and so they have no legitimacy and so the conflict can get violent very fast. External agencies need a way to understand why communities are entitled to certain rights and how to support their local plans and expectations. That's where Biocultural Community Protocols, or BCPs, can play a role. BCP have been developed as an interface tool to help overcome this challenge. They can be used to illustrate communities' identity and stories of origin, customary territories and ways of life, cultural and spiritual values, and environmental governance and decision-making structures. They can help identify current challenges and consolidate community visions, plans and priorities. Alongside a process of legal empowerment, they also affirm relevant rights and responsibilities under customary, state and international law. What a biocultural community protocol seeks to do is to be able to articulate it, is to be able to ha tell the story of a particular community and to generate a dialogue that clearly lays out who these people are, where they've come from, and their role in the management of this ecosystem and sustaining the biodiversity of this particular region. And this dialogue essentially is a way for the community to articulate its story and at the same time to be able to engage the existing legal system, to be able to say that we have these rights within the existing legal systems and, we would, and these rights need to be respected. Biocultural community protocols are being used in Kenya and Colombia in response to threats posed by mega development in the region and in South Africa, India and Pakistan to engage proactively with external agencies such as government officials, businesses and researchers. The Raika, Maldhari, Pashtun and Samburu communities are using BCPs proactively to advocate for agricultural policy change in South Asia and East Africa. Thus, rather than just responding to destructive developments after the fact, BCPs can serve as a platform for communities to engage with and inform planning processes before decisions are made. In the Kruger to Canyons UNESCO Biosphere region in South Africa, a traditional health practitioner harvests plants to make her remedies. This is a pepper bark and for a sore throat you just take the leaves you just take the leaves and boil just like tea and you gargle and also for for flu you can even you can even chew. <laughs> With pharmaceutical companies showing an increasing interest in such traditional formulations, they are gaining greater recognition. But this also threatens to edge out the communities that have developed and maintained these knowledge systems by increasing external demand for limited resources and introducing large-scale commercial harvesting techniques now there's a problem of they don't conserve these plants because they just don't understand what is going on. I myself didn't understand why should I plant the marula tree when the marula is there. But later, to me, when I went to school, when I came back, then I realized that this is very important. You get a fruit, you get medication, you get everything, you get oil, you get the creams from one plant. That's why it's important for us to conserve our nature. Because all these plants are going to be finished. Because of what? Because of the developments. 
of species that we use for the sauce, for the rash. Today, the traditional health practitioners from Bushbuck Ridge are using their community protocol to negotiate with local cosmetic companies. The community protocol is helping establish mutual understanding of how to ensure sustainable harvesting of plants in accordance with customary laws and secure recognition and fair benefits for the community. Today, community protocols are recognized as binding in international environmental law and also increasingly at the national and state government levels. But their potential to influence broader political and legal processes may require coordinated action at a larger scale. For example, multiple protocols calling for livestock keepers' rights in India could serve as the collective voice of a broader social movement, but still based on unique local context. <laughs> Documenting and consolidating biocultural community protocols and using them as springboards for legal strategies and action plans can be a transformative process. When used within processes of legal empowerment, endogenous development, social mobilization and advocacy, protocols can help secure critical rights and responsibilities in support of sustainable ways of life. These processes are not just relevant to indigenous peoples and local communities. As humanity struggles to combat climate change, conserve biodiversity, and provide for a growing population, it is clear that the wisdom and knowledge of indigenous peoples and local communities can teach the rest of the world how to harmonize ecologies with economies as they have done for millennia.